Hello everyone, welcome to the video on protein synthesis inhibitors part 2. In this video, I am going to explain about chloramphenicol, macrolide and ketolides, lincosamide, streptogamines and oxazolidinones. This is my channel, if you like the video contents, do subscribe. Now, chloramphenicol is a single class of drugs, you have only one drug is there. Macrolides, you have azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin drugs are there. In case of ketolides, you have only one drug that is telithromycin is there. Lincosamide example is clindamycin, streptogamine is a combination of quinopristine, dolphopristine and oxazolidinone. You have linozolid and tadizolid drugs are there. In this video, I will see the mechanism action and pharmacological aspects of all these agents. First one, chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol inhibitor of bacterial protein synthesis. The important thing about chloramphenicol is it is a broad spectrum antibiotic along with tetracycline chloramphenicol is also a broad spectrum antibiotic but it is bacteriostatic in nature that means it can control the growth of bacteria by inhibiting protein synthesis but it cannot kill bacteria. Now bacteriostatic but it has problems like it will show dose dependent bone marrow suppression idiosyncratic fatal aplastic anemia and grey baby syndrome in neonates. The reason for all this thing is chloramphenicol inhibits not only bacterial protein synthesis but also mitochondrial protein synthesis. The human cells contain mitochondria which has got individual protein synthesis machinery that is inhibited by chloramphenicol and this causes all these adverse effects. In, in neonates especially chloramphenicol is metabolized by glucuronide conjugation. Now this conjugation apparatus is not completely developed in young children. Hence the levels of chloramphenicol increases and that may inhibit mitochondrial protein synthesis and result in fatal grey baby syndrome. So the use of this drug is restricted because of such kind of adverse effects. Moving further when you see the mechanism of action. Uh, this is a typical bacterial protein synthesis machinery. Now chloramphenicol inhibits a step known as transpeptidation. Transpeptidation is the step in which the growing amino acids will form a peptide bond to this incoming amino acid. This step is known as transpeptidation and this is inhibited by chloramphenicol. But transpeptidation is <laughs> excuse me, inhibited, protein synthesis is inhibited and this is how it acts as a bacteriostatic agent, bacteriostatic agent. Next, now these are all the main problems as we have seen already in neonates this is very dangerous. It is fatal grey baby syndrome, in adults it may cause bone marrow suppression. Now when you see its uses, it is used to treat rickets cell infection and bacterial meningitis. It can cross blood brain barrier hence it is used to treat bacterial meningitis but because of the risk of fatal toxicities it is reserved only as alternate therapy that means when no other drug is effectively working then only chloramphenicol can be used. So this is about chloramphenicol. Going to the next one, macrolide and ketolides. As we have seen already, macrolides are erythromycin, clarithromycin and azithromycin, whereas ketolide is telithromycin. It has got a big ring, hence the name it has got macrolide. Now they also inhibit bacterial protein synthesis. How do they inhibit? See this is a typical bacterial protein synthesis inhibitor machine. In this, macrolides inhibit a step known as translocation. Translocation is a step in which the ribosomal apparatus move forward and that movement is inhibited here. So ribosome cannot move and it cannot read this mRNA and new incoming uh, amino acid cannot occupy the ribosomal site. So this is known as translocation inhibitor. Again it binds at 50S ribosome itself. Now bacteriostatic it is widely distributed but limited CSF so it cannot cross that blood brain barrier. And it will show gastrointestinal distress. The reason is in gastric, uh, in the intestine we have motilin receptors are there. They are stimulated by macrolides and that will cause gastrointestinal distress ranging to diarrhea. It will also cause QT prolongation. Uh, these drugs will majorly cause QT prolongation but azithromycin very less limited amount of QT prolongation is there. And they are inhibitors of drug metabolizing cytochrome P450 enzymes. In detail, see. The most important drug in this class is azithromycin. Azithromycin, the T half is very high, one drug per day dose is enough. 
and the clinical uses are it is used to treat chlamydia hemophilus influenza mycobacterium avium complex and toxoplasma to treat all of them azithromycin can be used the major adverse effects are as i told you it is a motilin receptor agonist which will cause gi disturbance ranging from diarrhea it also causes allergy and cholestasis this will results in hepatitis inflammation of liver and it will also cause reversible ototoxicity hearing impairment may occur but it is reversible so this is about macrolides now again lincozamide in this class we have an important drug called clindamycin now clindamycin one more drug is there known as lincomycin but the most popular drug is clindamycin now clindamycin can be used to treat gram positive coqui anaerobes and parasites the parasites include pneumocystitis pneumonia this is caused by a fungal organism known as giverosi previously it is known as carni but this is a very dangerous one especially this occurs in immunocompromised patients pneumocystitis pneumonia this can be treated by clindamycin again malaria is caused by plasmodium parasite for that also clindamycin is used toxoplasma gondii causes toxoplasmosis that can be treated by clindamycin now the major problem with clindamycin is it causes pseudo membranous colitis i have explained this previously also this is a kind of super infection super infection in which that at colon inflammation occurs and a pseudo membrane will be formed over the colon so this is a, a major problem so this can be caused by clindamycin now moving further now streptogramin streptogramin is a combination of quinupristin and dalfopristin it has to be taken only intravenously the major thing with streptogramin is this bacteriostatic agent is bactericidal in nature in all protein synthesis inhibitors you have only two agents aminoglycosides and streptogramins which are bactericidal in nature the other aspect is these drugs has got long post antibiotic effect similar to aminoglycosides so aminoglycosides streptogram streptogramin share these two features both of them are bactericidal protein synthesis inhibitors both of them have got long post antibiotic effect now not only this streptogramin has got multiple advantages like it can be used to treat methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus to treat both of them streptogramins are the choice of drug now adverse effects they they may cause venous irritation because it is given through intravenous route sometimes they may cause venous venous irritation along with that it will also cause arthralgia inflammation at the joints and myalgia in fact it is known as arthralgia myalgia syndrome because both the joints and the muscle pain will be there so this is about streptogramins now after that oxazolidinones you have two drugs are there lenozolid tadizolid again protein synthesis inhibitors see streptogramins also uh, the mechanism of action is they bind with 50s ribosomal unit and inhibit protein synthesis similarly lenozolid kind of drugs also bind with 50s ribosomes and inhibit protein synthesis say, protein synthesis now generally see they can be given intravenous or per oral oral absorption is good they are widely distributed including cns but the problems are they will cause myelosuppression peripheral neuropathy with long term use and they may also cause this one serotonin syndrome with concomitant antidepressants the reason for all these things is see the drug has got problems like thrombocytopenia that means thrombocyte levels will get decreased thrombocytopenia and neutropenia the blood cell count has to be monitored when these drugs are given for more than a week along with that they also inhibit monoamine oxidase the enzyme is inhibited hence this enzyme metabolizes serotonin so serotonin levels will get increased that is the reason why when antidepressants nothing but ssrs when they are used serotonin levels will be increased very much and it may cause serotonin syndrome which is a dangerous one again linozolids the major uses again they are used to treat methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus so these two classes are very powerful drugs to treat these infections so this is about oxazolidinones now this is a, a brief list about uh, uh, 
spectrum of activities. See broad spectrum of all the antibodies, the broadest spectrum are chloramphenicol and tetracycline. But the problem chloramphenicol has got multiple adverse effects, hence it is reserved to treat only certain infections, not all. In case of tetracyclines also, they, they are used to treat rickettsial, chlamydial and my, micromonospora infection. The next one, moderate one, macrolides and ketolides. The major use of macrolides is respiratory tract infection. The major use is respiratory tract infection. The narrow spectrum one drugs are lingosamides, teptogramine and linozolid. Now, see, lingosamide, we have clindamycin, which is popularly used to treat malaria, pneumocystis carini and toxoplasmosis. Whereas, streptogramins and linozolid are popularly used to treat methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So, this is about bacterial protein synthesis inhibitors. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe.